The morning cloak butterfly, Nymphalis antiopa, is one seriously weird insect. From its strange beginnings as a caterpillar to its long life as an adult, the morning cloak is far from what most people think a butterfly should be. In this video, I'm going to cover eight amazing facts about the morning cloak that you are sure to find as strange as they are awesome. Be sure to stick around for the end because I'm saving the strangest trait of them for the last. Let's get into it. Number one, morning cloaks live for a long time, up to 10 to 12 months. While this doesn't seem like a long time to us as humans, since we have an average life expectancy of 75 years or so, a year of life is quite long in the butterfly world. A big part of why they can live so long brings us to number two. They have the power of suspended animation. While it is common for many species of critters to hibernate in the winter or estivate in the summer, few do both, but the morning cloak does. Morning cloaks emerge from their chrysalis around the time of the summer solstice. They then feed for a short time before entering a state of estivation or summer sleep. It is thought this summer rest is mostly to reduce wear and tear on them as butterflies are fragile creatures. They remain in this suspended state until early fall when they once again become active and feed for a period of time. Once colder weather moves in, they will find a sheltered place beneath loose tree bark, a crack in a building, or something similar. They will then stay there for the winter or until a warm enough day comes along for them to fly. The amazing thing is these butterflies survive freezing temperatures with no ill effects. Their body fluids contain high levels of sugar-based compounds in the winter. This keeps them from sustaining cellular damage and lowers the temperature at which their body fluids freeze. This coupled with a well-chosen hibernaculum with the proper moisture to cold ratio allows them to experience freezing temps and survive. The fact that they can begin normal metabolic processes anytime the temperatures warm up in the winter makes them one of the earliest butterflies to fly in the spring. Their ability to do this brings us to Number three, the morning cloak can fly at lower temperatures than most other species of butterflies. It's not unusual to see. Morning cloaks perched on tree trunks are flying in winter if the air temps get near 50 degrees. The morning cloak has a few tricks that allows them to do this. First, the dark outer wing color acts as a solar collector and allows them to heat up by basking in the sun. Their bodies are also quite hairy looking and fuzzy. Of course, this isn't true hair, but hair like bristles but they serve the same sort of purpose and add a bit of insulation to the thorax of the morning cloak. Finally, they can contract their flight muscles rapidly, a form of isometric exercise that creates heat. The combination of basking and isometrics can raise the thorax temp of the morning cloak by up to five degrees and allow them to fly at temperatures below 50 degrees. If you are finding the morning cloak as amazingly strange as it is beautiful, please pollinate that like button I would also like to take a quick moment to thank all of our supporters on Patreon for helping make these videos possible. Of course, sitting on the side of a tree in the wintertime, trying to preheat their flight muscles so they can take flight, puts the morning cloak at an increased risk of predation. Which brings us to number four, the original tree bark camo. The outer wing color of the morning cloak not only makes a great solar collector, but it looks like bark which is a good thing when you hang out on trees, even when they aren't overwintering in them or trying to heat up their wing muscles, but we'll get to that after a bit. The outer wing color also blends in very well with another tree part, the leaves that have dropped and fallen to the forest floor. But how and why does the morning cloak get down there? Number five, morning cloaks are not afraid to play dead. If a predator such as a bird comes along before a morning cloak has a chance to reach flight temp, it will simply drop from the tree trunk and tumble down to the leaf litter on the forest floor. Once there, it will virtually vanish amongst the jumble of brown leaves, its outer wings blending in almost perfectly. This is a cool trick if the morning cloak hasn't warmed up enough to fly, but what about if it's reached flight temp and it's able to take flight? Number six, shock and awe. If a warmed up morning cloak is startled, it will quickly take to flight. The fast opening of the wings acts as a startling flash with the bright blue spots and yellow wing edging. As it opens its wings, there's also an audible click that is thought to be a noise to startle predators even further. Butterflies that make noise. How cool is that? Number seven. Don't think it's the adults that get to have all the fun with the weirdness. Morning cloak caterpillars are plenty strange in their own ways. The eggs are laid in large groups and as they hatch out on their host plant, 
usually a willow, poplar, elm, birch, or hackberry. The first caterpillars to hatch will immediately begin to eat those that haven't hatched or are in the process of hatching. Now, while this form of siblicide sounds ruthless and cruel to us, it is actually nature's way of ensuring that those first emergers are going to get a large nutritious boost to start them on their life journey. Those larvae that remain will feed as a group and will defend themselves against predators by twitching in sync with each other to give the illusion of a larger, more aggressive critter. To back up the threat, the caterpillars are covered with irritating, eutricating bristles. So don't touch them unless you want to itch for a bit. Even a morning cloak pupa in its spiny chrysalis will vibrate if it feels threatened by a predator. Number eight. And now for what may be the strangest trait of the morning cloak butterfly. They rarely, if ever, visit flowers. Ask someone what butterflies feed on and flowers will be the answer 99.99% .99 of the time. But morning cloaks are different. They prefer to feed on tree sap. See, I told you that bark camo would have another use rotting fruit, and they also like aphid honeydew. At times they can also be seen puddling on mud and occasionally even on dung. If you want to keep increasing your butterfly knowledge, go ahead and watch this video on migratory species that are not monarch butterflies and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.